Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can build a Python app to get information on cryptocurrencies. We're going to be using an API called CoinCap to pull the data on prices, market cap, circulating supply, and rank. In addition, we're also going to be using the request library in Python to send requests to the CoinCap API to get the data, and then we're going to display the data to the user. We're going to be doing this by first prompting the user for the cryptocurrency they'd like information for, and then request that cryptocurrency to the API and then display the information in the terminal. So without further ado, let's begin. All right, so first I want to show you how this app will work and then I'll show you how to build it. So first I'm going to run my code and here you can see that the app prompts me to enter in a cryptocurrency. So for this example, let's say that I want the information for Ethereum, I can just type in Ethereum and then when I hit enter, you can see that it displays things like the cryptocurrency's name, the symbol, rank, the circulating supply of coins that are available to buy, the market cap in US dollars, and the price in US dollars. So now that you know how the app works, I'm going to show you how to set up your project and then I'll show you how to use the CoinCap API to get the data. So first and foremost, you need to have a folder opened up in your code editor of choice. I choose to use Visual Studio Code, but if you'd like to use any other editor, that's fine as well. So in your folder, you want to create a Python file. So I'm just going to go up and click this new file icon right here and then name my Python file app.py. And this is going to be the file that we're going to be writing our code in. Okay. Next, we're going to need to create a virtual environment. So to create a virtual environment, you can open up your terminal. And if you're on Mac, you can type in Python 3 hyphen M V E N V and then the name of your virtual environment. So in this case, I'll just name it V E N V and I'll hit enter. And this is going to create my virtual environment. If you're on Windows, the command is the exact same, except, except instead of putting Python 3, you can just do Python. So for Windows users, you can just do Python hyphen M V E N V and then the name of your environment. Okay. And once your virtual environment has been created, you need to activate it. So in order to activate it, you can do source V E N V forward slash bin forward slash activate if you're on Mac. And if you're on Windows, I'll have the command in the description and on the screen. Now, once your environment has been activated, you're going to need to install the request library in order to actually fetch the API. So in order to install the request library, you can do pip3 install requests if you're on Mac. And if you're on Windows, you're just going to do pip install requests. Okay, but since I'm on Mac, I'm just going to do pip3 install requests. So if you give it a few seconds, you should have the library installed. All right, so now that I've walked you through how to set up your project directory, I'm going to explain a few things about this API. So if you go to docs.coincap.io, you'll see a page like this, and this is basically documentation for the CoinCap API. So this page is useful if you'd like to learn more about the CoinCap API. Now if you scroll down to where it has get and then forward slash ID or forward slash assets and then forward slash ID, you're going to want to copy this URL that you see right here. Okay. This URL is something that we're going to need when we fetch this API and to quickly go over how this URL is going to work. This URL will basically take in an ID, which is going to be the cryptocurrency that the user requests information for. So for example, if you want to get data for Bitcoin, we would pass in Bitcoin into this ID parameter right here. If we wanted uh, data for Ethereum, we would basically pass in Ethereum into this ID parameter right here. Okay. And, th and this ID is also a required value when fetching this uh, specific URL. And now that I've gone over how this API works and have set up the project, we can start writing the code to create this app. Okay. So now I'm back in my project directory and I have my app.py file open. Now this is the file where we're going to write all the code. So I'm going to first explain how the code is going to be written. And what we're going to do is first import requests. Then we're going to ask the user for the cryptocurrency they'd like information for. Then we'll fetch the CoinCap API using requests and get data for that cryptocurrency. And then we'll finally display the data for that cryptocurrency. So let's begin. So first I'm going to import requests by doing import requests. Okay. And then we're going to need the cryptocurrency that the user wants. So we're going to create a variable and that variable will be equal to an input. So I'm just going to create a variable called user underscore input, and this will be equal to stir input. And then we're just going to prompt them what cryptocurrency 
would you like information for? And then I'll put a space at the end so that it looks cleaner whenever um, the code has executed, okay? And if you're wondering why we're putting this stir function around this input right here, um, we're basically doing this so that we can only accept strings as input, okay? So now that we have this done, we can basically start fetching the CoinCap API. So to start fetching it, we're going to be using the request library, which we've already imported. And I'm going to first write down the code for it, and then I'll explain to you guys um, what the code will do so that you can understand it easily. Okay? So I'll create a variable called response, or, and then I'll um, set it equal to request.get. And I'll just pass in the CoinCap API URL. So I'll just do https colon slash slash api.coincap.io forward slash v2 forward slash assets and then another forward slash and then plus user underscore input dot loader. Okay, so I wrote this code right here and this will basically fetch the CoinCap API to get the data of the cryptocurrency we requested and it will store the response from the API in this uh, response variable right here. So it'll first use this request.get method and here I've just passed in the URL for the API and I'll provide this URL on the screen and in the description and after I've added this URL. I've um, added the user input, which is basically the cryptocurrency that we want the data for. And this uh, user input dot lower will basically convert whatever we typed into this input field to lowercase. And we're doing this because CoinCap's API only accepts the cryptocurrencies that are requested in lowercase. So for example, if I typed Bitcoin in all caps and it didn't have this dot lower method, it'll send a request for Bitcoin, but in all caps. And since CoinCap's API only accepts um, the cryptocurrencies in lowercase, it'll return a 404 error and won't give us any data for it. But if you convert it to lowercase to avoid any issues, it'll work. And if you just um, type anything that's not in lowercase, it'll convert it and um, our code should be working fine. Okay. So now with that said, let's test this out to see if this response works or not. So I'm going to do print response. Okay to get the status of this response. And if it shows 200, then that means that the response was a success. So we can run this by doing python3 app.py. And I've also cleared my terminal so it's easier for you guys to view everything. And once I hit enter, you can see that it prompts me to enter a cryptocurrency in. And let's say that I want information on Dogecoin. So I'll type Dogecoin, but I'm going to do it in all caps to make sure that this uh, user input dot lower method is working over here. So I'll just type Dogecoin in all caps, and now I'll hit enter. And here you can see that it returns 200, meaning that it has the data for Dogecoin. And this also means that this dot lower method worked because even though I typed it in, in all caps, it converted it to lowercase, so the API fetching would work. And now that we know that this works, I can remove this print response variable. And in the next clip, I'll show you how to display the information um, coming from this response variable right here for the given cryptocurrency. All right, so now that we know that our API fetching for CoinCap is working, we can start to display the data. So I'm going to first write down the code for it, and then I'll explain to you guys what it means. And I'm doing this so that I can avoid any confusion. So I'll start writing down the code. All right, so I've just written down the code for it, and these are all print statements, and they'll just print the data on our terminal for the cryptocurrency, okay? So this first print statement will basically print the cryptocurrency's name. So to do that, it'll first um, print out cryptocurrency colon space, and it's going to print out the name which is stored in this response variable. So what it will do is first convert our response to JSON so that it's easily accessible. Then it's going to access this data key, which will allow us to access various parts of the data for the given cryptocurrency. And you can see this repeat throughout the code over here to access other um, parts of the data as well. All right, but for this first print statement, since we're only accessing the name, it's just going to do data and then access the name. Okay, so if I wanted data for Bitcoin, I type in Bitcoin and then the output would be cryptocurrency colon space and then it would have Bitcoin as the name for the cryptocurrency. Okay. The symbol is basically the symbol for the cryptocurrency. So for example, let's say that I wanted um, data for Ethereum. Next to symbol, it will print out ETH because that's Ethereum's um, symbol, okay? And the rank is basically the rank 
for that cryptocurrency. So for Ethereum, Ethereum's rank is number two, so it'll print out two next to this rank right here. And the circulating supply is the number of coins that are currently circulating. Um, so it'll basically access this supply right here, and then it'll print the um, number of coins that are circulating at the moment. All right. And then the market cap is basically the market cap for that coin, and it's going to display the market cap um, in US dollars. So it'll basically access that data key, and then it's going to access the market cap to US dollars. And this is in camel case syntax as well. Okay. And then last but not least, it's going to display the price for that cryptocurrency. So it'll do the same thing that we've been previously doing. It's going to convert the response to JSON, then it's going to access that data. And then once it's accessed data, it's going to allow it to access other parts of the data. So it'll just access the price for it in US dollars. And this is also in camel case. So it's gonna be price USD, okay? So now that we have the code written, let's um, test this out to see if this works or not. So I'll just run my app by doing Python3 app.py. And if you guys are on Windows, you're just gonna do Python app.py. Okay, so I'll just hit enter and it's asking me what cryptocurrency I'd like information for. So let's say that I want information for Ethereum. And then as soon as I hit enter, you can see that it gives me the data for Ethereum. So right here, it has the cryptocurrency's name, the symbol for it, the rank, the circulating supply of Ethereum, the market cap of Ethereum in US dollars, as well as the price of Ethereum at the moment right now. Okay, so now that we've gotten all this data, we're pretty much done with this app, except we only have one last thing to do, and that is error handling. So let's say that our user um, you know, enters in a cryptocurrency that doesn't exist. Now, CoinCap would not you know, have any data for a cryptocurrency that doesn't exist, right? So we need to come up with a way to handle um, those sorts of things. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do that in the next clip. And once we've done that, we'll be finished with this app. All right, so now we just need to add error handling. And earlier in the video, I told you that if the response's status code was 200, then that means that everything was a success. Now, if the status code is not 200, then something went wrong. And whenever a user searches for a cryptocurrency that doesn't exist, the API will send a 404 error and 404 is not equal to 200. So what we're going to do is check if the status code is not equal to 200. And if it's not equal to 200, then we can tell the user that there was an error trying to retrieve the data for the given cryptocurrency. Otherwise, meaning that the status code was 200, we can just display the data. So let's begin writing down the code for it. So I'll just do if response.status underscore code is not equal to 200, meaning that there was some kind of error, we're going to print um, error trying to retrieve data. Okay. And then else, meaning that if the response's status code was 200, we're just going to display the data because 200 means success, right? So now let's run the code. So I'm just going to clear my terminal first and I'm going to run it by doing python3 app.py. And if you're on Windows, you're just going to do python app.py. So I'll hit enter. So let's say that I want data for Bitcoin. And here it gives me the data for Bitcoin. Now let's say that I search for a cryptocurrency that doesn't exist. So I'm just gonna add in like random letters, right? And then if I hit enter, it says error trying to retrieve data. Now let's try again. Let's say that I misspelled a cryptocurrency. So instead of putting Bitcoin, let's say I put bit and then C-I-O-N. And here it says error trying to retrieve data because this cryptocurrency does not exist. So now we've pretty much finished making this entire app. And I hope you found this informative. And if you did, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And I would also like to say a big thank you for 600 subscribers, which is a big milestone. And I also want to apologize for the late uploads. I've just had finals this entire week and haven't had time to film. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.